Photo editing can be complex because there is no one single way to edit a photo. You can achieve the same look using different methods and there is no correct editing style as it's all personal preference and taste. However, of course, there is a level below which we can all agree that a photo is overdone or over edited. Each year Lightroom is getting more and more features and now more so than ever before, there are a ton of different apps to edit your photos. So no wonder photo editing can seem like a total minefield for beginners. With all that in mind, in this video, I'm going to share with you six photo editing fundamentals, which will give you a good base from which to edit your photos. Now, this is not a 10 styles or how to do cinematic moody edits. Instead, this will give you a solid grounding from which you can then edit as you wish. Also, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, but more on them later on. Before we start, it's important that we have a good image to work with. A photo that's been taken well in good light, with a good composition, with an interesting subject, will just be a lot quicker to edit than a photo where we haven't used the best settings or perhaps the light's not very good and we're trying to rescue a bad image. I know this sounds a little bit vulgar, but it's true. You can't polish a turd. In other words, don't expect editing to fix a poorly taken photo. A good analogy for this is if you imagine you spend a whole day cleaning a car and you detail it and it looks like brand new. However, the chassis itself is rusted through and the first speed bump you go over, it will crack. Well, it doesn't matter how well polished or how nice the car looks, it's still useless. Well, the same applies to your photo. It doesn't matter how much editing you do, how many color grades you apply, if the photo itself has fundamental issues, you're not really gonna get very far. The first step is to set the correct exposure and white balance. Now, in many cases, this will be good to go straight out of camera. However, in some scenarios like shooting in harsh light or even snowy conditions, you can get an image where the exposure is not optimal, nor the white balance. If you start editing your shadows, whites, blacks, highlights, before you set the general correct exposure, you're technically shooting yourself in the foot because sooner or later, you will have to fix the global exposure. And perhaps some of the more extreme edits like lifting your black point too high, introducing a bit of noise, you wouldn't need to do if you just set the correct exposure from the start. White balance is the same. There's no point color grading an image or working with the colors if the baseline white balance of the photo is incorrect. You could spend 20 minutes getting all your co uh, colors perfect yet then realize the image is too warm, cool it down, and now you have to redo everything that you've done. So save yourself the time and the headache, and always make sure the image is properly exposed and white balanced. Just a quick note, when I say properly, I don't mean correctly by some standard or whatever. It means if that's how you like the image, if it looks good to you, and if it makes sense for the conditions and the light. The next step is to make any geometrical changes and the crop. I'll do the geometry adjustment first, which is where you basically make sure that all the vertical and horizontal lines are straight. Now, this is a personal choice. You don't have to do it. In many cases, it can actually make the image look worse. But the reason you do it first, if you want to, is because it can affect the crop of the image. So you do the geometry first, then you move on to the crop. And this is where you set the overall composition of the photo. The reason you want to do it before any further editing is because your composition can play into how you edit the photo going forward. Perhaps if you go for one type of composition, you would use a slightly overexposed look. Or perhaps if you go for a different composition, a more muted look might be more appropriate. So do that first. With the image properly exposed, white balanced and cropped, the next step is to do your biggest, most creative and most noticeable effect first. Now that could be applying a preset, it could be applying a different type of light to the image and relighting the image. It could be converting it to black and white, or it could also be applying a very heavy uh, contrast adjustment or a very heavy color grade. A good way to put it is that if you start editing all the sliders and start fine tuning the image, and then you think, actually, I want to apply a heavy color grade. Well, you might have to undo some of the work that you've already done. Instead, 
you do the biggest adjustment first, the one that makes the biggest difference, and then you make all the small adjustments around it to sell that effect. Here's another analogy. If you take a glass, which represents your photo, you take an apple or an orange or whatever fruit that represents your big edit, and then you take the water itself, which represents the small edits. If you first fill the glass with water, which is all your small edits, and then you think, let's do the big edit, put the apple into the water, what will happen? Well, all the water will spill out because it has to accommodate the apple. Then you have a bit of a mess and time to clean up. However, if you put the apple into the glass first, therefore do your biggest effect first, and then simply just top it up with water, then you don't have to undo anything and everything fits in perfectly. So do your biggest and most creative effect first and then use all the other smaller adjustments to sell that effect. The next editing fundamental is try to work with the photo that you have and don't work against it. It's a quite a big topic, I'll do a whole separate video, but for now we'll keep it brief. So what do I mean by that? Let's say you take a photo on a very boring cloudy day, it's flat, there isn't much colour and you really want it to be colourful. Maybe when you were there, you remember it feeling colourful. Maybe you were in a happy mood, so everything kind of felt vibrant and colourful. But the reality is the file that you have in front of you is flat and there isn't much colour. You can start fighting with that file and trying to force colour into it by sliding the saturation all the way up or maybe doing a heavy colour grade. And all you're gonna achieve is you're gonna just ruin the image and make it muddy. Perhaps instead a black and white conversion will be the best thing to get the most out of that file. By working with the file that you have as opposed to trying to force your creative vision for what you think it should look like onto it, you'll get further than by trying to force your way through that image. I think that makes sense. I think this advice is slowly fading away, however I still hear it now and again, and that is you need to have your histogram in the middle in order to have the correct exposure. The reason this is not the best advice is because a histogram is nothing more than a mathematical and data-driven representation of where all your pixels are from black to white. It doesn't care about how the image looks. It doesn't care about what looks tasteful. All it cares about is data. So following the histogram blindly without adding your own interpretation of does the image look good is the same as blindly following a sat nav that's taking you straight down the road even though you can clearly see the road is flooded. Mind you, people still do that and they drive in the fields and stuff, but that, I digress. So obviously you're not going to just blindly follow the sat nav and flood your car. Instead, you're going to stop, think, okay, well, I have to go a different way. It's the same thing with editing using the histogram. Yes, the histogram might say your image is technically overexposed, but if it looks good overexposed and it works overexposed and you like it, then that overrides what the histogram says. So use the histogram as a rough guide to know where mathematically your image sits just on pure data, but ultimately your creative vision and your taste should override that in terms of does the image look good to you or not. Last but not least, just because Lightroom has a ton of different sliders and adjusters, it doesn't mean they need to fuck around with every single one of them. Of course, huge caveat here, if you're learning, then yes, do mess around with every single slider because that's how you will learn what works, what doesn't work, and what each adjustment does. However, once you've understood that, just because they are there, it doesn't mean you need to adjust every single one of them and adopt a less is more mentality. If you can get to the end result that you want with the least amount of adjustments, the better. Is that gonna make any real noticeable differences to your image? Is your image gonna look any cleaner because of it? I don't know, it's debatable, depends how far you mess around with, but it's just a general minimal approach, which I believe will take you much further than messing around with everything and hoping for the best at the end of it. Okay, that's all for this video. I'm starting to lose my voice. The aircon is running on max at the moment. I still have another two talking heads to film after this, but hopefully they come out right again, okay, waffling. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got some useful information out of this and hope that it will improve your editing workflow going forward. Of course, if you have any of your own editing fundamental tips, so to speak, please use the comment section for that. 
But for now, I'm gonna leave you to it. I'm gonna go and take a break from sitting next to this window and cool down, but yeah, I'll leave you to it. Thank you ever so much for watching. Have a good week, have a good weekend, and I'll see you soon. Bye. I want to take a moment and thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I've been using their services for over five years and I couldn't be happier with what they have to offer. I use Squarespace to publish my travel and photography blog where I write about gear, travel, photography and more. I use them for my online store where I sell my presets, travel and camera guides. Squarespace is my photography portfolio where I showcase my best images from all of the travels and locations. All of this is under one roof with a great web interface and mobile apps to keep on top of everything regardless of where I am. If you're looking for the best all-in-one solution, then I can honestly recommend Squarespace. Please click on the link in the description and use the code RomanFox for 10% off. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring and thank you for watching.